So we see that the Acts of 1864 and the Acts of 1865. So the, the Civil Rights Act of 1864 came after a lot of pressure um, on Lyndon B. Johnson, President. Uh, President Johnson. And basically, the Civil Rights Act declared that no segregation in public places. Okay, so remember, if for those of you who are familiar with this and familiar with Black history at all, everybody knows about Brown versus Board of Education of Topeka, Kansas, and Prince Edward County, right, of 1954. And that said that schools should not be segregated. So that essentially overturned that component of Plessy versus Ferguson, that separate but equal, right, because we knew that separate was not equal, deliberately so. And so 1954, we have that, but that doesn't that doesn't um, negate segregation altogether. This was Board of Education. So it was in 1964 that segregation was dismantled. Um, and then there was supposed to be no discrimination in employment based on race, gender, or national origin, okay? Which was actually quite important because that also applied to the or national origin that also applied to people like those who were Japanese who were in the West because people were discriminating against those of East Asian descent ever since World War Two with the bombing of um Pearl Harbor, when Japan bombed Pearl Harbor, they were in concentration camps, essentially. We called them um, we called them other types of camps, but they were actually in concentration camps. Um, and the idea of being East Asian in this country was dangerous, as a matter of fact. So not based on race, gender, or national origin became an important component of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Additionally, in 1965, um, Johnson had to sign in a, another act, and this was the Voting Rights Act of 1965. This is after the Selma to Montgomery March, right? And so signing that Voting Rights Act um, meant that all people who were now considered citizens, right? You're born in the United States or you have citizenship in the United States. It's not all men now. It's all humans. So that concept from 1776 has grown to include humans, right? If you have the qualifier of citizen, then this means that you have the right after you have reached 18 years or older in order to participate in voting. And that means that you cannot be, um, you cannot have a barrier between you uh, by way of if you are a landowner uh, an, another kind of property owner, whether you have, uh, whether you are literate, but that, that the, the disqualifier is if you are a felon. The disqualifier could be if you are a felon. So that's when, when the next question then is, right, what about the others? What about the other people? And this lets you know, this lets us know that one, there's continuity in this issue of civil rights. Civil rights violations are human rights violations. These are violations to our constitution that we, that, that quote unquote, these founding fathers set up in 1776 after they stole the land from the indigenous peoples, right? Exactly. So when we say, what about the others? We mean, what about the fact that there are African-American men in prison and they don't have access to information or education or medication. The fact that they are constantly over-policed, not just African-Americans, but also um, brown peoples as well. So these are also the descendants of Native Americans and Native Americans as well. They don't have access. The poverty to pipeline, to prison pipeline is excruciating. The fact that you can sit in a jail waiting on a trial um, for three years or more, and all of that time you are prevented from having a job, you're preventing from having access. And then if you're let out, if you're if you're found not guilty, you've lost three years, five years of your life. Over-policing, constant policing. This is why we had a Black Lives Matter movement. We still have it, right? Constant policing. The fact that, that police are not uh, taught cultural responsiveness that they are now just, they're trying to have now cultural responsive teaching to know how to deal with people that have, let's say, uh, mental um, mental barriers that have, um, that, that can't hear, that have problems processing information, right? Because they too are taught to fear black and brown bodies. And so they're not, they're not responding 
uh, many a times out of a place of knowledge, but out of a place of fear when you have young officers. So those people have to, what about that, right? What about the, the, how they're being trained? What about the Native Americans, the First Nations peoples who were forced to go to boarding schools um, in the United States and in Canada and who were told that their language and their religion were not enough, though they were sexually assaulted and they were left by, by the law. They had to stay there until they were 18 years old. What about them? What about about their generational trauma? What about the LGBTQAI plus communities? What about women and reproductive rights? These are all still a part of civil rights. And so until all of these things are addressed, the continuity has to continue. So we end this conversation with a Portuguese term that we use when we do African studies called a luta continua. A luta continua simply means the struggle continues. It means that the education must continue, the persistence must continue, the information must continue. And so I really do hope that this has been something that has, um, that has educated you, uh, something that you find more and more interesting. Um, and so what I want to do then is end this session by inviting you. Um, we're going to see um, a portion of, uh, well, in a couple of weeks, you're going to see, um, we're going to put out an opportunity for you to join us. One, uh, we're holding a whole civil rights teaching, whole class uh, this this summer. There's going to be a whole civil rights class this summer. So I'll give you all the knowledge that I have with documents and information and special speakers. And if you want to do, you know, special meetups, then we'll have that opportunity to do that as well. But I'm very excited to extract and excavate this concept of civil rights in the United States with you. So if you are interested, I do want you to reach out. You can definitely contact me, Robinette D. Cross, or you can follow us, please do, on our public platforms at Cross Cultural Talks. I am so glad and I'm so grateful that you allowed me the opportunity to share with you tonight. Thank you so much for joining me. Take care. God bless you. Good night and go be great on purpose. Goodbye, everybody.